Hi, good morning. The purpose of today's video recording is to show you the tiled effect card. I have two types of tiled cards that I will be featuring in this video. The first one is a single piece of cardstock, three by three, and I have used my scoreboard to create the tiled effect. The second tiled card I'm featuring is literally cut into one inch squares. So it starts out also as a three by three piece of cardstock and we trim after we stamp. And I'll show you how to create this card, which also happens to be a fancy fold card. Our first tiled card is currently made with So Saffron. I'm gonna change it up in just a moment. I'm gonna use the Seaside Spray. The colors that I've inked here are subtle colors. So I have Purple Posy, Seaside Spray, Soft Seafoam, again, Purple Posy, Seaside Spray, Soft Seafoam, and here we have So Saffron and also Rococo Rose. So I'm gonna create the same card using Seaside Spray and just still highlight those same colors. I used a braided linen twine to put my bow above the two uh, feathers that are die cut from Nature's Thoughts die sets, which complements the stamp set that I'm actually using the feather from, which is Positive Thoughts. So you can get that together as a bundle. I will be embossing a layer of the same tone on tone, so I'll be embossing a layer with this tasteful te textile embossing folder. I have already uh, prepared my seaside spray. This piece is 11 by four and a quarter. So this is a standard size of making a vertical card. If I score it in half, I would need to score it at five and a half. So here's my five, five and a half mark. And I'm gonna use my scoring blade that leaves me a little crease mark, making it easier to burnish that, that edge. I'll do that in a moment. Meanwhile, I have another piece that's already been pre-cut. This is the tone on tone I was talking about that I'm gonna emboss in just a moment. And this is five and a quarter by four inches. And then finally, I have a scra an additional scrap of seaside spray so that we can die cut our feathers. All right, let's get that big shot. We're gonna emboss first. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and, uh, since I already have my cutting plate on here, let's go ahead and die cut that feather. Okay, I have my magnetic plate, I have my cutting plate, now I'm going to put my scrap of Seaside Spray with a feather, place it on top and a second cutting plate to layer it and cut my feather as well as emboss it. There we go. Isn't that a really nice finish? The veins of the feather are really pretty. Let's do one more. Again, I'm recreating the exact same card. The idea is to focus on our tile front. So in preparation of that, we're gonna get these little pieces ready. I still need my cut and emboss machine. So I'm pulling out my embossing plates and my embossing folder with the four and a quarter, I'm sorry, four inches by five and a quarter seaside spray. So I'm going to tuck that into the folder. There's a nice horizontal line that I can use so that I can align my card. I'm just kind of helping keep that um, definition of the embossing uh, pretty linear. So we'll run this through. Remove our plates. Put the big shot away and the plates. And let's take a look at how beautiful this tasteful textile embossing folder leaves the paper. Isn't that nice? All right, so 
we are going to be placing this on top of our card base. Now that I have a clear space, I'm gonna use my bone folder and give that a nice firm uh, crease. And I'm gonna grab some of my Stampin' Dimensionals and place them on the back side. All right, so we have that. We're gonna uh, go ahead and do our textile square, textile square, our tiled square next. So with that, I need my scoreboard. And hopefully I have enough room here on my workspace. But I wanna be sure that you see the measurements. And I'm gonna take a three by three whisper white card and my scoring tool. I'm gonna to use the thinner tip and I'm gonna score it every half inch. So that's one half inch, one inch, one and a half inches, two inches, and whoops, let's get back in place, and two and a half inches. Now flip that so your lines are now vertical and you're gonna trace again on the half inch score line the one inch you can see those little tile patterns developing there's one and a half inch two and two and a half inches so now it has that textured pattern of a tile in fact if I really if I really want a little more definition I could crease it just a little bit to give a little more definition to the tile. And of course I'll be laying it flat with some dimensionals on my card. Next I'm going to be using my feather from Positive Thoughts and I'll be using five colors. So saffron, soft sea foam, purple posy, seaside spray, and Rococo Rose. So I'm just getting all those lined up and ready to use. I'm gonna grab my feather, and I'm also gonna need my my um, um, my little cleaning pad here. Um, make sure I don't have any ink already on there. So I'll start with Seaside Spray, and I'm just gonna stamp a feather diagonally. Tap tap on my little cleaning pad. Make sure it's clean, and then let's go with Purple Posy next. And uh, soft sea foam. Get a little more angle here. Very pretty colors. And let's go with so saffron. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put a saffron there just to show it off a little bit more. And I'm going to have a Rococo Rose coming in this corner. And let's go ahead and repeat Seaside Spray. And one more soft sea foam. There we go. And I'm, that center space in the middle is perfect because I'm gonna be putting a sentiment right in the center. But you can see um, where I've stamped the feathers that that tile crease um, is still evident. Now, I am also going, oh, I shouldn't close my seaside spray because I'm going to spudge the edges. Since I'm doing tone on tone, I want to outline my tile piece. I'm not gonna layer it with another cardstock. Instead, I'm just gonna tile it. Now, earlier I used a different color on that sponge, and when you buy the sponge, it comes in a round circle. If you just cut it into fourths, you believe it or not, you have a lot of sponging uh, surface. So I used one color there, and if I just clip it, 
I now have a different end that I can put a different color on, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to hold up my piece of cardstock so that I can sponge the edges. And that's just going to give it a little soft shadow. So as it lies on top of the tasteful textile embossed piece, it'll have a little bit of a contrast on the edges. Again, giving it more definition. It also helps showcase that tile edge too. It looks like we've gotten, whoops, careful, careful. There we go. So that's taken care of nicely. I like, I want to try a different color. I just, I think that these feathers look pretty regardless of the color. Certainly we could use neutral like crumb cake. That would look pretty, Sahara sand. So let's put our tiled piece with some Stampin' Dimensionals. This time I just need a few. I'm gonna put about five here. One on each corner and one in the middle. Let's peel this off. Oops, don't wanna peel the whole thing. <laughs> No particular order, all of my feathers are pointing outward. I might put the Rococo Rose up here. Let's do that. And center it up here to the top. Making sure my orientation is still opening the right direction before I get it too settled. Then pop up my little feathers as well. A couple of dimensionals. <clears throat> And one more for good measure. Put those peeled. And we'll just lay them down from the card. Make sure they don't extend past the base of your card so it'll still fit in an envelope. And let's offset that one. And now we need our braided linen. So we're gonna make a bow with long tails. Short loops, long tails, let's see. There we go, shorten my loop a little bit. That's about right. I want that long tail to just kind of hang down on that card, so let's trim that. And I need a glue dot, which I keep forgetting to put on this table. I've switched work tables and um, I'm gonna use these. These come from Paper Pumpkin and they are just great. And you never use all of them. Of course, with my Paper Pumpkin, sometimes I just use my more traditional tape. Okay, that needs a little more trimming. And now we need our sentiment. So for the sentiment, I need a, a strip about half an inch to five, about maybe five eighths of an inch, just a, a smidgen more. Um, the sentiment uh, says to have a beautiful day. I'm gonna use the same ink, the Seaside Spray. Just kind of coordinate. The other colors just help give it some, um, just brightens the card, but I'm sticking with the base color of Seaside Spray. Have a beautiful day. And all I'm gonna do, because this, these are little cubes, little tiles, I'm just gonna keep it simple and just snug. So there we go. I might even trim it a little bit on top and bottom. Because remember, those tile pieces are about half an inch. So this will just lay over it a little bit. And let's get some of those mini dimensionals. And pop a couple back there. Have a beautiful day. What a lovely card. I do like it in sea, Seaside Spray. The card has been made with So Saffron. As a matter of fact, the first time 
it was made horizontally, see? And this time I chose to make it vertically. Very nice. This next tiled card is going to be cut into one inch squares. So we begin with a three inch piece of Whisper White. We'll be layering that on top of a three and a quarter inch squared Blackberry, uh, Blackberry Bliss. And then we'll layer that on top of three and a half inches of Old Olive. We'll be, um, once we stamp, then we'll cut that apart. We're also going to be using just a slightly different shade. Originally, I had made this card with Sahara Sand, and I'd like to see it on Crumb Cake. I think this is a little darker tone, and I think it just uh, will complement these rich jewel tones better. So, we're going to first begin by inking up the sentiment, or it's like a sentiment, but it's uh, just a stamp with a lot of words looks like a torn piece of letter that's perhaps written in French. The stamp set is called Very Versailles. So it's just so, uh, I don't know, wispy and romantic looking. And it just took me back to visiting France and, and um, made me feel happy. So I chose this set with these colors that were inspired actually by a friend of mine. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some texture on the card uh, front, which by the way, let me back up just a moment. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches long. I scored it in half, so that's at five and a half inches. And I scored it at one and three fourths so that when I lie these pieces down, they will leave a little margin here and still overlap just ever so slightly on this side. All right, so we're gonna stamp here up against the crease of the card, and I'm still gonna use my Sahara Sand. I think it's got a good dark tone to it, but not too dark. We don't. We want the card to stay soft and subtle. So we're gonna start here with a few words, and as you can see, I didn't quite fit, fill up my card, so I'm just gonna go down here and layer a couple of more verses. And there we go. So now we'll have some um, contrast there. We're going to need this again because we're going to be stamping onto our Whisper White. So let's get that part started too. Again, ink it up. I'm using Sahara Sand. And in this case, it'll cover half of the cardstock. But I'm going to need to in fact, what I'm going to do, I suggest, let's use, I used a piece of scrap earlier because I don't want my words covering each other. I'd rather there be a little bit of a gap than to stamp over each other. There we go. So I will put some more words there. There we go. That gives me the kind of background look I'd like. I'm gonna bring out the viney leaves and use old olive ink with that. Ink that up. In fact, I'm gonna do it upside down so I can give it more pressure. And I'm gonna do one angled across this way. And I'll do my other one, turning my leaves upside down and go in that direction. There we go. Now I'm going to use this really pretty brocade ornament and ink it with Blackberry Bliss. I'm gonna center that and put pressure straight down. And there I have the very Versailles design on this card. Now I'll be putting a sentiment here and I'll be putting some gilded um, gems on it. Before I do that, however, I'm going to need to trim this into one inch squares. So this one requires my trimmer. Pull this in. Get that so you can see. I'm. It For me, it's much easier to score 
multiple lines as we did the first card a moment ago. These multiple lines is just so much easier on the scoreboard because it's repetitive. In this case, um, so I do have the scoring uh, blade on this. In this case, I'm gonna obviously be using my cutting tool. So I do need the, the uh, blade to cut. And one of the reasons that I don't use this for scoring multiple lines is because of this, even though it's clear and I can see through it, it's just more convenient to use a scoring board. Just in case you were wondering, now, the other thing that I find when I'm working with small pieces is that if I need one inch, to me it's easier to slide it this way and use this one inch uh, identifier as opposed to this side. So we are going to be working in that direction, okay? And I need my cutting blade, so I'm gonna work hard to keep these in order. I'm just gonna shift it down here until I get all three pieces laid out. Lay that up against one inch. And I, these right here, there's a ridge, so that helps me keep my cardstock in place. All right, now I have my three pieces, and I need to turn it so that I can cut them one inch in this direction. Again, I'm gonna do one piece at a time. I don't wanna risk uh, tilting the paper and then misaligning my square. So I'm gonna, again, do like a little puzzle piece. I don't know if you remember those little jigsaw puzzles that came. Uh, they were in a plastic casing. And the, usually, I think they were numbers. And they were all scrambled up and you had to move them around and organize them in order. Okay, so there's our first column. Our second column. We have our nine pieces. Okay, we're getting ready to put that together on our card. Now I don't want to disturb that, so what I'm going to do is just slide this it over for a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and layer these pieces. So let's put some sealing tape on the back of the Blackberry Bliss. There should be about an eighth of an inch margin all the way around to uh, contrast with the old olive. And I'm gonna adhere that so that there's a margin right here and it's gonna be flush. So I can just put a little bit of tape there to hold on to that spot. I'm trying to keep that centered. There we go. Now I have a foundation to place these pieces. So let's bring this back into place and I'm going to very carefully I'm going to use liquid glue as a matter of fact my Tombow adhesive and I'm going to adhere them one piece at a time and it's a very small margin between each of the pieces and I'm going to work from left to right so my second top row piece. The glue gives me a little bit of movement that helps a lot. There's my third top row piece. And let's get those scooted just a little bit. I need to want to see some of that gap. There we go. Alright, second row. And if you've noticed, I've put a thick glob, but I put it in the center because as soon as I lay that cardstock down, it does, whoops, it 
the, the, the thickness allows me to move the piece around, but it also, by keeping it in the center, when it flattens out, it doesn't squish out into these little margins. Ooh, look at that. That looks really slim and trim. Now I need my sentiment. I'm gonna center it in this uh, brocade looking piece and I'm gonna use Blackberry Bliss again. And yes, I'm gonna use one of my scraps. <laughs> Let's see, I think that scrap will work. Again, I'm gonna trim it. In fact, this one, I'm gonna trim a little bit differently. Um, it's not even straight if you notice. And that's okay because I want to trim around the shape of the words. It's going to center in, in the middle one inch square, but it does hang over. So that's why I decided not to go with a rectangle, but rather just outlining the words which just comes out to a little more creative um, look, a little swirl in it. There we go. Okay, and we'll pop that up with some mini dimensionals. There we go. on that end and on this end. Have a beautiful day. We're going to polish this off with the Gilded Gems. And actually for this, let me use my pick tool because it has putty on one end. There. So just a little bit of bling to bring out um, that very pretty Versailles. Let's put one right there. Okay, there you go. So I've decided to add a little touch to this, an additional little touch to this, and I'm going to adhere some old olive as a contrast to the inside base of my card. And kind of get that centered. And then I'm gonna stamp on this Whisper White. I'm gonna go back and use that really pretty vine. Um, let's see, where's my old olive ink? In fact, I think I may, I'm actually going to do both this, stamp off that slide, and I'm going to do my verse, and, but just a partial offset. Let's grab that piece, make sure we have it right side up, and there. There, just kind of bring that card together. There's something kind of missing about it. Yeah, let's do that. I always like to stamp before I adhere my card in case I need to use the opposite side for any reason. There we go. Yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely, it just pulls that card, it extends that fancy fold, and you can have space to write your sentiment. So today's video featured the tile technique. You can choose to, both of these are three inches, so you can choose to stamp and then cut one inch squares apart to have this effect, or you could choose the three inch and use your scoreboard at half inch increments, both vertically and horizontally, and it creates this textured look. And of course, you uh, complement it with an embossed piece below it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day.